everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, so today we are, so last week I made a roast, a brisket roast, which was great for Passover. Today I am going to make um, a pasta bake, but a pasta bake that has some Greek influence to it um, that would be great for Easter. So my family, you know, we did Greek and we did Catholic and Greek Easter to get, they merged into one giant thing. So, you know, like the Greek Easter, you get the whole lamb on the spit and all that deliciousness. And then, you know, the Catholic Easter is a little bit different, the ham. So this is a pasta bake that um, is a little bit of a riff on pasticcio. So it's not exactly pasticcio. So, oh my mom, I don't want to get the note tomorrow that that's not how you make it, I know. So we're going to do things in a little bit of weird order today so you could see everything. So I already made the um, the meat sauce. Now you could do this with lamb, like if my mom was gonna make it for Easter, she would do it with lamb, you could do it with beef, you could do it with ground pork, you could do it with eggplant if you wanted vegetarian. Um, and I'll show you how I made this next. And then we made like the, the sauce that goes on top, which is like a bechamel based sauce um, with butter and flour and milk and nutmeg, pepper, I put some bay leaf in there. Um, and a little bit now, um, the cheese, we're, we're limited to what cheeses I have. So I had cotija because that's what I could find, but any hard ground cheese would work great. So we had some pasta cooking. This is not a classic pasta for a pasticcio. I just had gemelli. So that's what we're doing. It goes into our meat sauce. The beauty of this dish is if you wanted to make this um, today, you could certainly make it today. But if you wanted to kind of get ahead on Easter stuff, you could make your meat sauce today, you could make your bechamel today, and then you could put this all together at the very last minute and bake it on Easter Sunday. So the meats, like I made this meat sauce this morning, but you could make it today and hold it in your fridge. It'll hold through Sunday, no problem. And then all you have to do then is make your pasta, mix it with the meat sauce, pour your um, bechamel sauce on top, and you're off to the races. What do we got question-wise, Liv? Anything good yet? Well, can you guess what the first question is? Can you freeze this? No, close. Where's Norman? Oh, Norman, he's meandering around. He's somewhere here. around here. He's, uh, he's, out of, he's out of salt. He's, he's cruising the kitchen again. But can you freeze this? You can't freeze. Yeah, you could freeze this. It doesn't freeze great, but you could freeze it. But you um, could freeze also just the meat sauce, right? Yeah, you could freeze the meat sauce. Bechamel won't freeze great, um, but it's a freezable dish. So now I have a, a baking dish. I brushed it with a little bit of butter. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our pasta. This was a pound, a little bit more than a pound, but you're going to do a pound of pasta. Jenny's wondering what is the normal pasta for pasticcio? So a lot of times you see it now it's it's made with penne but that's not even the classic one if you go to old greek markets or italian markets they make a long tubular pasta that actually is the exact size the pasticcio pasta is actually the size of a baking dish like this and you make those and if we were to make this in the classic greek sense like my mom would cook that pasta she would then take that pasta and um toss it with just a little bit of butter and cheese, and that would go down first. Then she would pour her lamb meat sauce on top of that, and then she would pour the bechamel sauce on top of that and bake the whole thing. So this is, we combined the sauce with the cheese in this situation, or the sauce with the pasta in this situation, and then we're just gonna take our bechamel, now, a lot of questions were um, came in, if I, if I can't have dairy, what can I do? So you have a couple options if you can't have dairy. You could use nut milks, those would work fine. Um, you can also, you could make like a, a, a broth thickened sauce, like a volute thickened sauce, and that would work fine too, where you would use a beef or a chicken um, stock and thicken it with the butter and flour and the cheese and then you're good there. So you do have options here, and there's some eggs in there. And then we're gonna take a little bit of our cheese, 
sprinkle that on top. And then this is gonna go in a 350 to 400 degree oven for anywhere between 25 and 40 minutes till it gets golden and that top sets up. So this goes in the oven. And what size dish did you say that was? That's a, a 13 inch baking dish. Okay. All right, so now we saw how to put it together. Now I need to show you guys how we make all the goodies. So the first thing that we're gonna get going is I'm gonna get, oh, wrong word. I'm gonna get the, the meat sauce going first. So I'm over medium heat here. Get this out of the way. I'm over medium heat and a good question on the question yesterday was someone said, you know, if your if your burners have a lot of power and you say medium, but my burners don't have power, what does that mean? So a lot of times you guys will hear me say medium to high. <clears throat> my medium may be your high. <clears throat> so you need to judge um, your own stove. Th this stove has good power, so medium has a decent flame. If you see that your pan is not getting hot enough, just go up to high and you're good. I gotta slide in here, Liv. Um, we have someone wondering about the potato layer. Is there supposed to be a potato layer in pasticcio? Um, or do some no, people that's do that? Moussaka. Oh, there you go, Karen. There's your answer. Different dish. The potatoes are delicious. <laughs> All right. So a little bit of oil in the pan. Um, the pan is getting hot. I have a mixture of ground lamb here and a little bit of ground beef, which I'm going to use. Um, Grace is wondering if the cooking time is different if you used a glass pan or versus a nonstick pan. No, I think it's still the same. Everything's still the same. Just make sure your the the heat directions on your pan doesn't, you know, if your pan only says you could take it up to 275 degrees, then things are changing a lot. Then it's going to take a lot longer to cook. But if your pan doesn't have those restrictions, no problem. I have about two pounds of meat here. Sean, I was wondering if there's different consistency to bechamel, because that one looked a little loose compared to one she's used to making. Yeah, I mean, two ounces of butter, two ounces of flour thickens a quart of liquid as a general rule. We're using three cups of liquid here, so I'm using a little bit less butter and flour. You could make, if you would like yours a little thicker, you could make it a little bit thicker too. Um, that's, that's not a problem, but remember, a lot of this, this style, like this is like a bechamel that then you add a little bit of cheese and a little bit of eggs to. So you don't add eggs to a classic bechamel. So when this bakes, it's gonna thicken as it bakes because the eggs are gonna cook and help it thicken and set up. So we're over medium high heat, we're in a hot pan. We're gonna let that brown up real good. I'm gonna put the lid on to speed up the process and so Fat doesn't splash all over my stove, no big deal. Similar to how we did the burger yesterday. A lot of people have been wondering what size cutting board this is. I'm gonna say 24 inches by 18 inches. Roughly. Roughly. Great. Liz, is there a, where's the measuring tape, Lizzie? Let's get the tape, <laughs> we're getting the tape out. Um, in the recipe I said use one onion, but this was a really big onion. So we're using half. Oh, someone said to go slower when you do this. So here's the, so I'll do it kind of on an awkward. My guide hand, see how everything's rolled under? And then this hand, and mm -hmm. then as I move, my guide hand creeps back a little bit to guide the knife. The side of the knife goes on the front part of the hands. Same thing here, you can see I'm holding it. The knife is against this. And I just move back as I go. Obviously make sure your thumb and pinkies are back too so you don't chop anything off because we wouldn't want that. Here. Just, uh, that up. Oh, it's Kim's birthday. Let's give Kim a birthday. Happy Shannon. birthday, Kim. An onion just fell on the floor. Liz is getting it so Norman does it. <laughs> go, Lizzie, go. Go, Lizzie, go. Go, go, go. No onions for Norman. Well, right. We have been asking how you picked Norman's name. Um, he was born on Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to say 
We named him after the, the movie, uh, Norman, after the movie with Billy Crystal, a cow named Norman. But the truth of the matter is, is he was born on Halloween, so we wanted a Halloween name. It started with Hitch, like Hitchcock. Um, and then we really liked the name Norman, and we're like, that's not really Halloween. And Liz said, Norman Bates! <laughs> <laughs> so I hope he's much saner than Norman Bates. So it's either, I'm going to go, though, either Norm from Cheers or um, Norm from City Slickers. All right, so it's 24 inches long. Oh, and 18 inches. Liv, what did I say? That, that's impressive. Boom. That was a good guess. It was a good guess. Victory dance. Doubt it would happen twice. I, our, our prize. <laughs> Liv is spending so much time with us that she's like Liz now, and she feels she needs to give me grief too. It's like a group effort. Teamwork. Um, um, teamwork makes the dream work. All right, so two cloves of garlic. Melissa's wondering if you make red Easter egg bread for Greek Easter. My mom used to, and my yaya did. I, I do not. But I did love it as a kid. I mean, I you know, the, the thing that I, like, the, the whole spit-roasted lamb, I love. Um, you know, the, the kind of very Greek weird egg and lemon soup, the avgo lemon, but it has all the just look up Greek Easter soup because it'll freak some of you guys out. Um, and the Kokoretsi, look up that one too. They're like two real traditional Greek Easter foods. The way that Greek Easter works, like kind of, is you would go to Mass and then after Mass, like Liz and I really discovered this one. We went to Greece for the first time. In Greece, no one eats before like 11 p.m. Like you go to a restaurant at 8 o'clock, it's empty. You're like, I thought this was a good restaurant. And then at 11, it's packed. So. The Greeks on Greek Easter, they go to Mass, and then they leave Mass at whatever, 11, 12 o'clock, and then they have this huge feast that the lamb was going on the spit all day, the kokoretsi was on the on the uh, spit all day, and then you feast. Um, it's kind of like the Italian, like, you know, when the Italians do the seven fishes Christmas Eve. You go to Mass, then you come home, then you have the seven fishes, and you eat the seven fishes, then you make it past 12 o'clock and then you could have prosciutto. So it's, you know, that's it's how it works. All right, let's see how this is going. Should be, yeah, so there you go. You got nice caramelization there. We're gonna let that other side start to brown. Again, I'm over high heat. And as that other side is starting to brown, I'm gonna add my onions and let those start to sweat. And then I'm gonna add my garlic and let that start to sweat. So we're gonna put a pinch of salt on our onions, which is gonna pull out the moisture and the sweetness of the onions. I'll put the garlic on top of that so the garlic doesn't cook faster than the onion. And then I'll show you how we mash all this together. <clears throat> now, other, if you're just doing a classic Italian, like more of an Italian meat sauce, the seasonings are slightly different than with the Greek. With the Greek, you put in like a little bit of Greek oregano. You could use fresh oregano too, or dry Greek oregano. Um, and then you put in a pinch of cinnamon, um, which whenever there was like a tomato-based meat sauce, the Greek-style meat sauce, it always has a little bit of cinnamon in it, which I personally love, love. Naomi's wondering why you wait to break down the meat. Um, it's just easier. So it's easier to get good caramelization on both sides of the meat when it's a huge chunk. And then to break it up is really easy too because, you know, at first I just kind of give it a little bit of this number to get it going. But the, a great trick to break up meat is if you have a potato masher. And I mean, it's got to cook a little bit more, so we'll let it cook. But I'm gonna, you'll see, I'll take the potato masher and I'm just gonna smash it. It'll break up all the meat perfectly, and then we could build from there. What else we got for questions, Liv? Um, a couple of fans are wondering where to find the recipes. Um, you could find the recipes on the page you're right on right now. They're all there, the Food Network Kitchen uh, Facebook page. Every one that we've done, 25, I think, are on there. They're also um, on my Instagram page, at Chef Simon with a Y, um, and my Facebook page, at Chef Simon with a Y, and on Twitter, with a Y. Sinclair is wondering what the difference is between Greek oregano and regular oregano. Five dollars. <laughs> uh, the Greek oregano is a little bit sweeter. Um, not much of a difference at all. The Greeks will say that it's better. 
so I'm going to say that it's better being a Greek. Um, as this is browning, I'm going to start my roux for my bechamel. So we have a couple tablespoons of butter. Janelle, I know you're wondering how to finish this video later. It will stay up on Food Network Kitchen page, so don't worry. Yes, and if you missed the beginning, don't worry, because you could see the whole thing at the end. We keep it, we keep it going. All right, so now, we take our potato masher. And we just mash together that ground meat and the onions and the spices. Real good. Butter's melting. Now, once the butter melts, you're going to put an equal amount of butter or flour as the butter. And the consistency you want for a roux is wet sand. So, like, think of a beach when it just rained, it should be kind of loose and grainy. And then we're going to cook this roux out a little bit because it's going to give it a slightly more nutty flavor. And then we'll start adding our liquid. Teresa Any other is questions, wondering Liz? if you should ever put olive oil in the refrigerator. I never put olive oil in the refrigerator, but I go through it very quickly. I just, you know, I mean, I could go through it so quickly. I just keep it by the stove. Um, but the best place is like a cool, dark place. So equal parts butter and flour. And then when I mix this up, it should look like wet sand. And if I put too much flour, I put a little bit too much flour. So it, it doesn't look like wet sand. So I didn't measure because I don't do those kind of things. Um, you just add a little bit more butter to get that wet sand consistency. Once you put the roux in, you're just going to keep stirring and now we look like wet sand. That's what we're looking for. And if you didn't want to use butter, could you use like a vegan alternative? Does you could, use, you could use olive oil. You could make a roux with olive oil. All right. So kind of moving around here. This is browning up nice. Now I'm going to add my tomato paste to this. And it really, when, if you were, when you're cooking this at home, you'll really smell that cinnamon and the oregano really start coming out nice now because they're just opening up. Put in our tomato paste. We're going to mix that into the meat and let that tomato paste brown a little bit. You don't, before you add any liquid to this, whenever you're using tomato paste, you want the tomato paste to get a little bit of rusty um, from the heat because that's when it, the natural sugars and stuff come out of it and it gets more depth of flavor. So don't just plop tomato paste in a sauce raw and not cook it out. You want to cook out tomato paste always. Lynn is wondering if she could have used almond flour for this, for the roux. I've never made it with almond flour, but I reckon yes. All right, so now take our milk. We're gonna add our milk or whenever you're making a roux or yes, yes Lizzie. Lizzie what's your question? I, I was just gonna say, why don't you use a whisk? I, I always I always use a whisk. I'm using a whisk right now. <laughs> <laughs> what I would have done. Liz Liz and Olivia wanna start an Instagram page that shows after um, these cooking demos every day that just they're just what I would have done. All for Liz and me. All for Liz and Olivia. All right, so we whisk in the liquid. What temperature is the roux over right now? Medium high. Okay. Um, and once the liquid is in, we're going to add the liquid a third at a time. If you add it all at once, you're going to end up with a lumpy sauce. Okay, so now I like to put a little bit of liquid in. You could use stock, water, wine, whatever you want. I have some chicken stock going right now, so I'm just going to use some chicken stock. And we put in... Our oh no! Olivia. Oh. Now and we put in our tomato. <laughs> Norman almost got something. 
Um, Aaron's wondering if tomato paste, if it matters if the tomato paste is in the can or in the tube. No, I just find the tube much easier to work with. Cans are fine too, but the tube, you use as much as you need and then you don't have to deal with that sad can in your freezer you don't, or fridge and you don't have to pop it out. Right, okay, wait, we need a new whisk. All right, so you can see, see how thick this got mm -hmm. already? So now we add our second amount of milk. Whisk that in. Deborah's uh, wondering if you ever use copper pans. I use copper pans all the time. I love copper pans. They're fantastic. And they last a lifetime. I mean, most of the copper pans that we have, we've literally had for over 20 years. Some longer, some have been passed down. Some Kyle found. Kyle loves the thrift. So some were found thrifting. Pinch of salt. Cracked black pepper. Nutmeg. Is it okay to use the metal whisk in a metal pan? Is that? Oh yes. This okay. All right. We have a, we've had a lot of uh, pan questions recently. This is why I don't like nonstick pans because you can't use any tool you want. In a stainless pan, in a cast enamel pan, in a cast iron pan, in a um, uh, uh, a, a black steel, a uh, uh, can't think of the name now. In a blue steel pan, still not the right name. Um, you you can use metal, wood, whatever. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about it. Um, Nonstick. There's you can't use anything. You can use wood, rubber. I, I don't like that situation, and I also don't like that they don't last long enough. And I also don't like that you they, they, you can't get them to a hotter temperature. Typically, you can't put them in an oven. The pans that that Liz and I have, we literally have had, we started getting them when we met and got married and 98% of those pans we still have. Because I like, I don't buy sets of pans. I buy pans a pan at a time um, and we buy pans that last forever. So yeah, are they a little bit more expensive? They are, but when you factor in the, how long they last, they end up being much cheaper. So buy a pan at a time. Don't buy a set. Don't buy, like that's that's where you get ripped off, in my opinion. All right, last bunch of milk. Teresa's wondering if it matters how much fat the milk contains. I mean, I'm always gonna say whole fat, but I, I don't like skim milk or 2% milk. If that's what you like, feel free to use it. Um, I like full fat milk. But yeah, there tends, sometimes there's more sugar um, in low fat milks than there is whole fat milks. And I think what a lot of what we're discovering is sugar is probably worse for us than fat, at least for me. Okay, so that's coming up to a simmer. This is simmering away. Now remember, because this is baked, normally I would say cook a flour thickened sauce, a bechamel, a velouté, flour gravy for 45 minutes to cook out the flour. But this is gonna actually go in an oven too and cook again. So you could factor in those 30 minutes that it's in the oven and deduct it from your cooking time. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna take four eggs. Carolyn is wondering if you can talk through the different types of salt you should use and when. Cook with kosher, finish with sea. That's it. Use iodized on your driveway if it's, it's snowed in Cleveland today. So um, if you lived in Cleveland and there's still some snow in your driveway, you could sprinkle some iodized salt on there and Everybody's going to be happy. All right. So I crack the eggs. We're going to beat these a little bit. And my bechamel is still very hot. So if I dump the eggs straight in here while this is hot, I turn off the heat, um, the eggs would scramble. Then you'd have egg drop bechamel. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our bechamel and add it to our egg mixture and mix that up. And all we're doing here is we're tempering the eggs. And it's like if you get in a hot bath, you would never 
take your whole body with all your force and lunge yourself into the hot bath because you put a toe in first and then it kind of adjusts temperature. It's a good analogy, Lizzie. It's a good analogy. You dip the toe. You dip the toe in the tub. Once the toe and the foot and the calf adjust to the temperature, then you lower everything else in. It's the same with an egg when you're thickening a sauce. You need to temper them first. Everyone's just laughing at me. Okay. All right. Now we're going to put in a little bit of our hard cheese. Again, off the heat so it doesn't get too stringy. Now at this point, your bechamel and your meat sauce are done. So you can now cool these, refrigerate them, and put this whole thing together whenever you want. Or you could do, you could build it now and bake it now and have it for dinner, just like how we built the one at the beginning of this video. So the choice is yours. So like, if you want to do this dish Easter day, I would say tonight, tomorrow, it's Friday, Saturday, you could make this part of the dish. Put it in the fridge, don't worry about it. And then before you, uh, when you're getting ready, you cook your pasta, you mix it with your sauce. The sauce doesn't even have to be hot. You take your bechamel, you spread it on top. Again, it doesn't have to be hot. And then you place that in your 350 degree oven and you bake it for 25 to 40 minutes till it sets up and it's golden. And then you're golden. So this is kind of one of those dishes that could be a make ahead or you could do it right now. Either way completely works. Let's see how it goes. Kelly's wondering if she could cut down on the egg yolks and add in more egg whites if cholesterol is an issue. Mm, it will still help the setup a little bit. You know, you, you yes, you can, because it's going to be a bechamel, the egg whites, it's going to poof a little bit and then fall. Um, but yes, you can do that, 100%. You're obviously not going to get the richness. Um, I am out of... Uh, I'm out of kitchen towels. I got to do laundry. Oh my God! So I'm grabbing Lizzie's oven mitt. Here, I got that. Her sister, <laughs> her sister got her this. That's amazing. Dropping a new recipe on your ass. I don't know <laughs> if I appreciate this, Liz. This first, you get the Liz's kitchen towels. Now you got dirty oven mitts. This could be the first time I've ever used an oven mitt. All right, burn myself. Okay. So, you can see, see how this set up, like I told you it was set up? It's all set up. In a perfect world, you would let this sit for five, ten, even a half an hour before you serve it, like lasagna. Think about this. This is almost like a Greek type of lasagna. Um, it, it, when, as it cools, it sets up a little bit better, it's easier to slice, it's easier to eat. And believe me, this thing will stay hot. If you put foil on top of it, it would stay hot for an hour out of the oven. So you could get ahead a little bit, no problems there. For TV sake, or Facebook safe sake, I'm gonna cut a little bit now. It won't be completely set up and I'm gonna burn the roof of my mouth, something fierce. Janice is wondering if you're supposed to wait for sauces to cool before putting them in the fridge. Yes. So I you, that one too. you never want to. Look at that. Yum, 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 yum. You never want to. Uh, if you put a hot sauce in the fridge, the top gets cool, the bottom gets cool, the middle stays hot, and it cools unevenly, and that's where bacteria grows. So you want to cool it down first, even in an ice bath, whatever, then you put it in your fridge, then it's safe, then it's going to last longer, then you don't have to worry about all those bad things. So you all, no matter anything that you're putting in your fridge, should go in your fridge cold. You should put something in your fridge hot, and then let it get cold. Wow, I've been doing that wrong Doesn't my entire also life. Lower the well, what well, higher is the temperature? I, yes, thank you. Liz, um, I'm gonna, so, real quick, 
on my cutting board today, this is something that has nothing to do with the recipe. It's a lie. Because at about noon was decided it was five o'clock so <laughs> no, it was two. So it was two. Two o'clock. So at two o'clock it was five o'clock so Which it really was five o'clock. You know, yeah, it was five o'clock so summer. So uh, that's why Liz Liz has all kinds of questions today. <laughs> and she's gonna make fun of me more than ever. She has right. the most important job right now. Oh, she always has the most important job. Now, mom, I know it's not classic, I know it's not yours, it's pasticcio ish. Um, and but it's still going to have all those great flavors. This is a great um, Easter dish. I hope people that are celebrating Passover loved the. Uh, um, oh my God! Huh? Brisket. I'm having a rough day. I'm drinking. I'm not even drinking. I wasn't. I haven't had a drink yet. I'm waiting for my bourbon after this. But I hope everybody with Passover enjoyed the brisket. Um, this is a great dish to put on your table for Easter or Greek Easter. Um, or Sunday. Or, or just Sunday. God. It's so good. It's not as good as my mom's. It never is. That's why I don't even try to exactly replicate her recipe because hers is always going to be better than mine. So I just say I put a little spin on it and then I don't have to compare it directly to hers. But I think my mom, my guy, I got a rest for soul, would approve uh, just a great, delicious, hearty, comforting dish um, that you could enjoy today or Sunday. All right, guys. Cool. Have a great night. We will see you tomorrow at 5. What am I making tomorrow? I think I'm making shrimp scampi with pasta. Garlic sh shrimp with pasta, I think. Um, it's going to be yummy. You can get all these recipes uh, on the Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. Also on my Instagram page, at Chef Simon Y, um, and my Facebook, Chef Simon Y. And I think that's, oh, and if you want more recipes, and a lot of Easter ideas, there's actually a ton of Easter Passover ideas on the Food Network Kitchen app. So maybe you want to check that out for a little bit of inspiration for the rest of the week. Have a great one, guys. Dish at a time, day at a time. I will see you tomorrow at 5. I love you. Bye.